Hello, insurance friends. Welcome to February Insurance Careers Month LinkedIn Live. I am so excited. This is going to be an absolutely amazing conversation. I'm so glad you're joining us either live right now or watching the playback. We are here with the amazing Spencer team, Megan and Tandaka. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it is so awesome that you all are joining today. I'm so glad we're going to have a chance to chat. But before we get into all the great work of Spencer, we are in the insurance industry, so we love to talk about weather. Um, for many of you know, I am in the Chicagoland area. It has been crazy weather this week. It's been all over the news. We were supposed to get all kinds of snow. We didn't get any snow in the Chicagoland area. A lot of rain. Megan, how about you? How is the weather where you are? Were you impacted by the big weather this week? I, it's like almost 80 degrees here in Philadelphia. Like it's going up to something crazy. All the cherry trees are starting to bloom. So it's like, it's like spring is here and it's February 23rd. So I don't know what's gonna happen for, from here through the rest of the spring, but it's, it's wacky weather for sure. That's crazy. And I love the cherry blossom season. So I really hope the trees are okay. Cause like they're so, so beautiful. Too. You guys don't get a cold snap. So, yeah, yeah. So that's crazy. Okay, Tandaka, how about you? What's happening over there? So I'm based in Atlanta, Georgia. You're going to laugh at me because I'm originally from South Africa. And so I still think in Celsius. So I always have to make like conversions and whatnot. But it's about the same temperature that Megan is experiencing. It's, you know, 80 degrees Fahrenheit and whatnot. But see, I don't I don't mind that. I like the heat. I prefer the heat. I'm done with this winter rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Well, my kids were hoping that we would get one more snowstorm so we could do some more sledding. So, but it did not happen. It's just a lot of rain here. So hopefully there'll be sunshine for everybody soon. So, okay. We are going to jump in friends. I am so excited. If you are not familiar with Spencer, you are about to hear some incredible, exciting, exciting information. And I'm so glad you're joining us. So Megan, you know, I am a super fan of Spencer. I just love the incredible work that Spencer does. The incredible Spencer community like you have such strong champions ambassadors partners it's phenomenal but can you first start off by telling us like why was Spencer created what's the mission how did Spencer start sure absolutely so we were started back in 1979 as a memorial scholarship fund in memory of Robert Spencer and he was a big titan of the industry he was a risk manager he was the president of RIMS at one point um, and so we grew from this pretty small memorial fund in 1979 to where we are today, which is a budget of about $675,000 just for scholarships in 2023. And then we have another about a million dollars on top of that for four other programs that we do. So we'd love to share more about that, but we do grants, we do course development, we do internships, and we send risk managers onto campuses to talk live with students. Um, and you're right, we enjoy very broad industry support. Um, I couldn't be more thankful for all of our benefactors and also, you know, the people that that benefit from us. It's a great community, like you said. It really is. Like when you meet Spencer, people that are involved, like it is such like a moment of pride. Like I just love whether it's a Spencer Scholar recipient or someone that's involved with Spencer. It's so fantastic. The community built. And I love how you talk about how Spencer was created because our industry has such rich history. You also see how people stand on the shoulders of giants to do even more. And so I'm sure thinking through like where Spencer started to the huge impact today, it has to just be so special for everyone that helped start and then the legacy that's continued and as you look forward. So it's phenomenal. Okay, Tandeka, you know I'm super passionate about scholarships. I think scholarships are just a huge vehicle for attracting more talent into our industry. They play just such a vital role in creating opportunities. What can you tell us about Spencer Scholarships? Yeah, absolutely. And and thank you, Marguerite, for this opportunity, you know, to just educate everyone about our organization, our scholarship programs, our various grant programs, which we'll, we'll touch on in a second. And, and just to touch on the uh, impact, you know, that Megan mentioned. So it's estimated that we've reached over 70,000 students um, from across the country. We operate in USA, Canada, and we're expanding into Bermuda as well. We've been able to award over $9 million in scholarships and another $8 million uh, through our general grants programs and other uh, grants, which we'll talk about, but to focus that's on huge numbers, wait, that's such right? huge numbers. We got to pause for a minute because that's like, like our industry loves data, so like that's fantastic. But when you think about the number of people you just talked about, like that were impacted, so the number of people 
the investment in people, the creating opportunities, those dollar numbers are so huge. And I really, one of the things I love about Spencer is you help shine a light of how the industry is really working together in big ways. It's hard sometimes to quantify the work in our industry. So I love how you just capture that in like, I had to just pause because it's amazing. Okay, sorry, keep going. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So uh, to focus on our scholarship program specifically. So, you know, for anyone that might be here with us today, if this is your very first time, you know, hearing about our program, um, our scholarship program is a merit-based program that is open to students all across all levels. So that's undergrad, masters, part-time masters, PhD, you know, so a Marguerite, if you decide you'd like to go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you apply for our Spencer scholarships. Um, as Megan mentioned, our mission is to support the education of future leaders within this industry. So that's risk management, insurance, and actuarial science. Um, our online application form opens annually on October 1st. So again, for any students that might be here with us today, make sure you're marking your calendar for October 1st. And once the application opens, students will have four months to be able to apply, which is plenty of time uh, to go through that process. We have an, an internal scholarship committee, which is made up of um, certain board members that review the applications every year um, and review the application form itself, as well as the rubric that we're using to grade it. And we've streamlined the entire process to make it super simple, to make it user friendly. Um, so for anyone that is watching, trying to figure out what they need to do to qualify for our scholarships to qualify, students must be seeking a career within this industry. So risk management, insurance, actuarial science. Once a student is awarded a scholarship, they become a Spencer Scholar. And we can engage with them in multiple ways, such as featuring them on panels and other speaking opportunities, free registration to certain industry conferences. Um, and they truly become part of the larger network in the Spencer Scholar family, as we like to call it. And we're also happy to share since we like data and numbers that we have an 85% um, ratio of Spencer scholars that land in this industry upon graduation. And so, yeah, and we have, yes. and we have plans as well. Absolutely. And we have plans as well to reach out to that remaining uh, 15 or so percent, you know, just to see what happened, you know, and right. if there are ways for us to assist right. them uh, to reconnect with this industry or, you know, to perhaps find a job within this industry. Um, but yeah, we have that 85% um, ratio, which is great. That's fantastic. It's so powerful to see how scholarships are bringing people in and then their opportunities with the companies. And then also though, that they're part of that bigger Spencer community, I think is so phenomenal and that they're then a Spencer alum. Like it's just, it's wonderful. Okay, so Megan, the past couple of years with the large focus on societal issues, when we look at how do companies take action, what was happening for Spencer with were um, companies coming to you saying, we wanna do something more in the DEI space. How can we really diversify our talent pipeline? How, what has happened in the past couple of years and where are you seeing like diversity and inclusion going within the Spencer um, family? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, even prior to all of the events of the past few years, uh, Spencer had one of our, as one of our strategic objectives was to broaden the student base. And this was uh, geographically, this was across areas of study, and of course it was demographically as well. We noted that most of the risk management and insurance programs that are out there take are at predominantly white institutions, right? So if you look at all the really big, well-known programs, mm -hmm. usually predominantly predominantly white institutions. So our goal through our course development funding is to fund more minority serving institutions. And that would be um, historically black colleges and universities, um, Hispanic serving institutions, Asian American and Pacific Islander in uh, serving institutions. So that's really a big focus of ours. We're also trying to use our risk manager on campus program, which is kind of a, a smaller uh, program where we are, you know, we're providing stipends to the university to get a risk manager on campus. That's a great starter program. I like to think of it as once you're applying for a course development grant, that's when the university really needs some serious resources. So mm -hmm. the risk manager on campus program really allows the university to kind of test the waters to see yeah. 
you know, how the, the course, you know, the, the program goes over with students to see if there's interest. And for us, you know, it's just a way to get more students exposed mm-hmm. to careers in the industry. Um, so that's really it. You know, we didn't, I, I see a lot of uh, donors coming to us as well. They want to use their dollars to support diversity initiatives, which we're fully supportive of and very proud of. But what we didn't want to do was create a new foundation or a new right. institution. We just bake these things into our our mission, right? So it really becomes part of our DNA. And you just naturally see that reflected in our beneficiaries. And I love that because there have been a lot of new things that have been started. Um, and, and I think it's hard. It's hard to keep that focus. You know, you could get a nice windfall and a big donation, but then the implementation is really key. And, and Spencer's already really great at that. So we're just so appreciative of our donor partners and love partnering with them in these very specific ways like course development. Um, we also have named scholarships where companies can specify that they would like you know, a, histor- a student from a historically underrepresented group to mm-hmm. receive the funding, right? So that's another way that we're kind of on a very individual basis drawing different types of students into the industry. Um, so just really proud of those efforts and especially of our donors for putting real funds behind that. I think it's really exciting to see the collaboration coming together and then as we have all these conversations across the industry about how do we accelerate work on diversity, equity, inclusion, how do we make an impact? I love how you're also looking at how do we be efficient and how do we be action oriented and do things like now in real time. And so that's what I love about the ways you just described, because you're able to build additional partnerships with HBCUs, minority serving institutions. You're able to work with your existing institutions. You're able to work on an individual level with individual students and individual companies to customize, but yet you're within the Spencer framework. And so you're able to move fast. And that's what I love too. It's like, I feel like when we're talking with some of the insurance regulators and policymakers, they're like, but what are you doing now? And I think Spencer is a great story of here's how we're taking action. Here's how we're expanding our talent pipeline. Here's how we're bringing more people in in a meaningful way, but also a really efficient way. So fantastic. I I just love it. I love it. I had a a point as well. So just to to touch touch on Megan's point about um, the name scholarship process. So that applies to individuals and to organizations as well. So if you are an individual that's here with us today watching this, or if you're a representative of a a nonprofit organization or any other type of uh, professional association, and you've been thinking about creating a scholarship and just don't know where to begin, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, We make this process as easy as possible. Uh, We take care of all the marketing, we take care of the application, um, everything. So literally all you have to give us is just your criteria, right? So what is it specifically that you're looking for, you know, is it a specific um, historically underrepresented group, for example, and we go through the process of making sure we have those applicants, we'll provide you with the top two to three um, matches at the end of the cycle, and then that's it, you'll have your scholar every year. That's fantastic. I'm here in the Midwest, as I shared, and so I love AF Group. They're here in the Midwest, and I love how they're working with you all, I think, in very innovative ways and are really trying to lead in the diversity space. And so I think to all our AF friends out there, awesome job. It's so exciting to see, and it's exciting to see how it's unfolding and coming to life. And so um, for many companies, I encourage you, go to the Spencer website. So if you go to the Spencer website, you can also click through and you'll be able to see many of the organizations that are collaborating with them and how they are bringing these initiatives to life again in real time. I just love the efficiencies as well as the big impact and how you're opening doors for so many people. It's so fantastic. Okay, so I also wanna take a moment, friends, to talk about internships. I am also very passionate about internships, apprenticeships, how they can be vehicles to attract more people to our industry, to diverse job seekers, to non-traditional job seekers. And then particularly as we think about there's so much changing in the talent landscape from the economy, from all the massive layoffs, what role are internships and apprenticeships? How is Spencer fitting into that part of the story on talent? Yeah, Yeah, I mean, I can talk quickly about apprenticeships and then Tendeka runs our internships program. So I'll pass it over to her for that piece. Um, But yeah, we're we're trying to work with some of the bigger insurance companies that are doing um, apprenticeships and the brokers as well. So Aon, for example, um, is very deep into the apprenticeship space, uh, Zurich, Chubb as well. And these are companies that have been supporting us already for decades. So it's a very natural partnership. Um, And 
they're just doing such amazing work. It's really changing so the face of the talent that's coming in. Um, they're providing this amazing uh, earn while you learn experience. So the, mm -hmm. the apprentices for the most part are working four days a week and then they're taking special courses on that fifth day to earn their uh, usually an associate's degree. And so Spencer's coming into play. We're, we're aiming to create a scholarship specifically to get people from that two year uh, associate's degree to a full time four year degree so that when these uh, new hires come into these companies, they're not kind of stuck at that entry level, right? They can continue their education, continue to work and get on the job training. And then they'll have this four year degree that will really make them eligible to get promoted throughout the organization. And then of course, as Tandeka mentioned, we have our part-time master scholarship. So if they want to keep going, you know, we can kind of fund this entire pipeline of education for these new hires. So that's where we're aiming to work in the apprenticeship space. Um, we're also working with a company called Safari, which I'm sure many of you oh, know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Jelani. Yes. Jelani. Shout out to Jelani. Shout so out to, to Jelani Fenton. Um, <laughs> and so when, you know, a lot of times uh, companies are coming to us looking for help with apprenticeships programs. And, you know, with our staff of four, right. um, you know, we, we really don't have that in our wheelhouse. But, you know, by partnering with Jelani, we can kind of package something together using his services, as well as all the things that Spencer can bring to bear. So really just looking forward to a growing partnership with Jelani at Safari as well. I, it is so exciting to see, like, I just, again, like the collaboration is so phenomenal. And again, it goes back to what we were just talking about at the beginning, like the long history of the industry of how people work together. So talking about how Aeon and Zurich Chubb, they've been partners for a long time with Spencer. We are also looking at how do we innovate in the talent space? And they all have been champions for several years now, like their leadership on apprenticeships has been phenomenal. And so to all the companies that are watching, if you are interested in starting an apprenticeship program, learning more about the journey, you have to take a look at these companies. It is so powerful what they're doing. And particularly when we look at the talent trends, what is happening in um, the talent trends for as far as people coming into higher ed and looking at jobs in different ways. But I love how you are working with them. And then what I also love is the lifelong learning aspect of Spencer. And so here you have two years, now you have four years, here you have your master's, like that lifelong learning is so important. And again, as we go back to looking at what are the HR trends of how do we continue to reskill, upskill, develop our talent, and then keep people in the industry. I love it, Megan, that was so exciting. Okay, Tandeka, I know, it's. I just get so excited. Yeah. Tandeka, now let's talk about internships with Tandeka. Yes, oh, we we love you, Marguerite, by the way. We love your enthusiasm. <laughs> it's so, so exciting. We love it. Um, yeah, so with our internship program, right, it's one of the four uh, grant programs that we have here at Spencer. What we're doing with this program is filling a need within the industry that we see. So we see internship opportunities on the brokerage sector, you know, on the insurance side with underwriting, sometimes even claims internships, but you don't really see it on the risk management side for several reasons. Um, typically, when you're looking at the risk management function or department, if there is a risk management department within the organization, it's typically a, a one man show, right? Or a one woman show. Um, and so they really need that support. You know, a lot of risk managers are lucky to have like a risk analyst working with them, or if there's a chief risk officer, maybe a risk manager underneath them. Um, but, you know, like some of the largest departments that I've seen out there is, you know, maybe a team of 10 people. Um, so uh, a lot of the times they don't have the bandwidth, the manpower or the funding to be able to host a risk management intern. So that's the hole within the industry that we are filling with this internship program. So for any risk manager that is across the U.S., Canada, and we're expanding into Bermuda as well, if anyone in Bermuda is watching, um, all you have to do is apply. The application is open on an annual basis. It's on our website as well. Um, it'll open up again this year on August 15th. But literally, as you're going through the application form, you'll see that we're basically just asking, what are you going to do with the funds, right? So once we send you these grant funds, just give us that step-by-step -step process of what your intern is going to learn, right? What are they going to be exposed to? We want to ensure that it's going to be within the risk management function um, and that they're not going to be doing administrative tasks most of the time, like like fetching coffee, essentially, <laughs> that they're not going to be doing that. Right, right, that's um, a meaningful all experience. Experience. Yes, right, right, exactly. right. We, we want to we want them to love it. We want them to stay. Yes. We want, them to and we, we want that 85, yeah. 
Yes, exactly. And and we're hoping that this, you know, experiential lunch, uh, experiential learning opportunity will plant the seed in their mind. So with the internship program, they don't even necessarily have to be risk management majors or actuarial science majors. Um, risk managers have that freedom and flexibility to select any student that they choose. And hopefully that experience will plant that risk management seed within their mind so that they can start to career. Uh, they could start to consider this career um, seriously once they graduate. So, yeah. So I love the internship initiative because it helps the company open up a door and it also helps them take some of the pressure off of like, how are we going to do this? And so I think sometimes when we think about like, how do we do things in different ways, there can be such like, I already have a million things on my plate. We already have a lot of things going on. And so coming in with a solution, this is something you can do, I think is really just inspiring and empowering. So love it. So fantastic. Okay. So our time is flying by. It's crazy. We have more we got to get in. Okay. Monday is Spencer Day, which I'm super excited. It is 2023 and it is February Insurance Careers Month. I love that Spencer Day is helping wrap up such a powerful month for Insurance Careers Month. But for those that don't know, what is Spencer Day and how can people be involved in Spencer Day? Yeah, I'll, I can start off with the overview and then I'll let Tendeka get into the details. So we started Spencer Day a couple of years ago and it was kind of a, a dual purpose, really an awareness raising day, not just of Spencer as an organization, but of our scholars. Um, so a lot of times people have Spencer scholars working at their companies and they don't even know, right? It's not like people are walking around with like, I'm a Spencer scholar sticker on them. Yeah, we'll right. Yeah. right, right. We should. <laughs> we should something. Um, so it was just a way for Spencer Scholars to identify themselves, for companies to identify the Spencer Scholars who work for them, for companies to, uh, you know, give a shout out to their relationship with Spencer, why they donate to them, um, but also, you know, a call for individual donations. Because if you look at our uh, kind of a spread of donations, about 90% comes from corporations, which is wonderful, right? The insurance industry, you know, there's there's a lot of funds that pass through right. and it's nice for Spencer to have these, you know, pretty wealthy partners, if you will, right. on the corporate side. Um, however, you know, we do want individuals to feel some tie and some affinity to Spencer. So really just that push for individual contributions, like yes, your company contributes and yes, your company name is all over our website, but how about you as a person? How are you impacted? Who helped you get your insurance career going? And how can you help pay it forward to the students that are coming in into the industry now? So I'll, I'll turn it over to Tandeka for more of the details of what's happening on Monday. Yeah, absolutely. So as you mentioned, Monday, February 27th is Spencer Day. So definitely be on the lookout for our social media postings and our email blasts. Um, we're, we're really looking for community involvement, right? So we're looking for ways that people can get involved. If you're not quite sure what to do, we do have a donation link. We are a nonprofit organization at the end of the day. So there's a donation link that's on there. Um, since it's 2023, what we're asking for this year is $23, right? I feel like that's achievable, attainable, you know, even at the student level. So $23 donation in 2023. Um, so that link is available on our website as well on the front page. Mm -hmm. um, other ways that you could get involved is just to share how Spencer has impacted you either personally or professionally. Um, as Megan mentioned, if you have a Spencer Scholar in your workplace, feel free to do a shout out, right? Um, and utilize our hashtag as well so that we can see all of your social media postings. It's hashtag Spencer Scholars. If you utilize that hashtag, we'll be able to like, comment, reshare, um, and engage with all the content that you put out there. Um, but yeah, recognize Spencer scholars, um, whether they're in your workplace or not, right? Maybe you have a friend that's a Spencer scholar, or maybe your uh, your mentor is a Spencer scholar. Feel free to give them that shout out um, and talk about how this organization has impacted you or your company. Um, you could also recognize some of the great outcomes that we talked about earlier today, like impacting 70,000 students, um, the dozens of new risk management and insurance courses that have been developed through our course development grant program, um, and the ones that are in the pipeline are in our process of being developed as well. Um, and there are two other grant programs that we're, we're running out of time and probably won't be able to, to discuss today, but we have a general grant program as well. So if you're someone in the audience that has been impacted by our general grants program, 
feel free to share that. And then we have our RMOC program as well, risk manager on campus. So if you are a student that was in the classroom, let's say on the day that the, uh, the risk manager came, feel free to, to share those experiences on social media. Yeah. And even if you've just attended our gala, if you've run in our 5K, you know, just um, for people to keep these things in mind and talk about and share, you know, why you did it, what, what it did for you, um, because these are these are the stories that we need to hear. And it's really what keeps us going as a team. And, and it's what keeps our supporters interested in supporting us is when they see this broad impact across the industry. I love it. I love it. OK, so, friends, again, it is Monday. September 27th, it is Spencer Day. Go to the Spencer website, follow Spencer on LinkedIn and Twitter, Instagram, all their social channels. You'll be able to find more information on how you can donate. And again, $23 for 2023, that is such a small, reasonable amount. We know you want to help share the great stories about Spencer. And I loved, Megan, how you talked about who helped you in your career, and this is a great way to help others. So June Holmes, I got to give a shout out to June Holmes. She has been incredibly influential in my career, and I'm so appreciative of June. So I'll be donating $23 on Monday in honor of June because she is so fantastic. <laughs> there is, again, just a great way to help um, support others and give back through Spencer Day on Monday. So that is really fantastic. I can't believe our time is flying by. So I have to give a shout out to Tandeka. She was part of the Emerging Leaders virtual class in 2021. And then she came back this year to our 2023 Emerging Leaders Conference that we had at the start of Insurance Careers Month. And Tandeka, I greatly appreciate you speaking on the panel. Yeah. You were absolutely amazing. You were so inspiring. And I greatly appreciate how much you talked with all of the incredible emerging leaders. You were just so fantastic. It was really wonderful to see you there as a keynote speaker. So we're very, very appreciative. So my um, one, I have one last question for you both. So as you look ahead to the future, like, so there's so many exciting ways that you intersect with the insurance industry, with the companies and the trades and all the industry partners and the students. What is one of the things you're most excited about as you look out to the future of five in the next five years about our industry? It could be anything. What are you most excited about or one of the things you're most excited about? Wow, that's a great question. I mean, for us, you know, every time we get an additional dollar, we put it to amazing use. Um, and the course development program, it's just really skyrocketed. Um, we have Ken Goldstein working with us now, who was a professor at UHart. Um, and really, you know, talking with Ken, we all agree that the way to really scale insurance careers is by getting more and more courses and programs at more and more universities. So, you know, and, and the, it's it's limitless, right? So people right. say, well, if I gave you a million dollars, what would you do? I'm like, well. <laughs> I'm like, well <laughs> I will tell you. I have a few ideas. Yeah, we would love to see RM, RMI 101, Risk Management and Insurance 101, in, as a required course in every business major. Everywhere. Right? Yeah. Like it's, risk management is so critical. Insurance makes the world go round. We all know this. There's no reason why it's not a standard part of education in every single business school curriculum. So things like that, you know, we have pretty lofty goals. We're attacking it one school at a time. You know, our overall submission flow for course development grants increased. We, we had more for the first quarter this year than we had for all of last year. Oh, that's and great. that's really, you know, working as a team and in particular Ken's outreach to let people know and let the universities know that that funding is there. So that's oh, what I would love to see, Marguerite, is just really that kind of concentration of risk management and insurance courses in as many universities out there as possible. That's great. That's great. That's great. Yay. Okay, Tim Decca. Yeah, for yeah, for me, I'm excited about the expansion of DEI within our industry. Um, I'm I'm looking forward to welcoming young, diverse talent into this industry because that is literally what is going to change our future and what is literally going to change the face. Um, of this industry. And so I'm just so proud and happy with the work that we're doing through our scholarship process. And as we talked about, you know, earlier, the name scholarship process and how that ties back to DEI, um, because scholarships really are the key to educating the future of this industry, and especially for historically underrepresented groups. Scholarships can often mean the difference between going to college or not, right? right? Mm -hmm. or, or going to college and working two part-time jobs to make it through and pay the bills. So we're just so blessed um, and so proud to be able to award some financial relief to students that are most determined to join us after graduation. 
Okay. I love it. I know my heart is bursting, right? My heart is bursting. That's what it's about, right? Bringing more people in and expanding these opportunities and having our industry reflect the communities that we serve in and how we help people around the globe. And so just phenomenal. So phenomenal. Okay. So insurance friends, colleagues, job seekers, thank you for watching our LinkedIn Live and watching our LinkedIn Live playback. Again, I want to thank Megan and Tandaka so much for joining as part of Insurance Careers Month for sharing all kinds of exciting information about Spencer. So what you all can do is go again to the Spencer website and go to the Spencer social media channels to learn more, take part in Spencer Day, and to help our industry expand more opportunities. What you can also do is leave a comment down below. You can give us a like and you can share on LinkedIn. So again, Megan and Tandaka, Thank you so much. This has been so fantastic. It went so quick. Thank you, Thank you so much for joining today. Thank, Thank you so you. much. It's our pleasure. We really appreciate yeah. it. <laughs>